Okay, so here we have a right triangle in the first quadrant where the coordinate axes are the sides and the hypotenuse passes through the point 0.18. So you got to find um, basically where the vertices of the triangle will be so that you can have the hypotenuse of the triangle be as short as possible. So let's draw, you know, a sketch of what this looks like because it's always, always, always helpful and recommended to draw a picture. Even if you can visualize it, I always tell my students that, you know, take that extra time, draw a picture, really gain a good understanding of what this is, you know, talking about in terms of geometry, plus drawing a picture is really cool. It's fun. I like it. So here, we've got a point one eight. So your triangle, if it's gonna, you know, have the um, coordinate, ax the coordinate axes as the sides, it's gonna do something like this. Let me draw, let me go straight edge to make it more accurate. Potentially be doing something, be doing something like this. So you got like a right triangle. You know, here has vertices here, here, and here. The origin zero zero. At a point over here, x zero, and a point over here, zero y. And we want to, you know, find a minimum length of hypotenuse. Um, you know, the hypotenuse, you know, this whole side length, let's just call this whole side length h, the hypotenuse length. So then, um, you know, typically the, quad, you know, the, the uh, Pythagorean theorem says that, you know, x, y and h you could have x squared plus y squared is equal to, you know, h squared. You want to minimize um, the value of h squared with this function. Um, now, tech technicality, because, you know, if we're going to differentiate this, we're going to have to take, you know, we have a, you know, we're going to have to use implicit differentiation. So let's just make the hypotenuse, like the value we're actually looking at, let's just make it a capital H. They're trying to minimize capital H. Because if we minimize h squared, you're going to minimize the hypotenuse length. So we're basically trying to find the smallest value for h, for capital H. So um, what we have then is x squared plus y squared equals capital H. So, you know, we want to basically differentiate this, but we have two variables, so we can't strictly differentiate this, you know, without doing it implicitly, and that won't be helpful because we need to um, find critical value, and we're not that far in our calculus lives. So what we got to do is make it so that this function is in terms of just x or in terms of just y. Let's just make it in terms of just x because x is the cooler one. So we're gonna solve this func or solve another equation that I'm about to show you for y and then we write this in terms of just x. So here's the trick, here's the trick. It's gonna, it's gonna blow your mind. You're like, how do you think of this? I don't know, but what we're gonna do here is so you have a line, we know it's a straight line, right? You know it's a straight line. Straight line, you know, based on what we learned in our algebra lives all these years, has a slope, you know, slope typically is M, you know, constant slope. So let's say we just have a, let's say this, we're talking about this purple line segment right here, it's a purple line, only from here to here. Like, well, what's the slope of this purple line segment right here? Well, let's say the slope is M, right? That's what we normally use, M. How do you find the slope of a line? You know, you do y2 minus y1. Let's see, let me put it over here, actually. You know, you time the difference in y coordinates over the difference in x coordinates. And you can always find the slope by doing that. So if we're, find the, we're trying to find the slope of this line segment from this point to this point, we can basically just go eight minus y over one minus zero or m is just essentially eight minus y over one or just eight minus y, right? So eight minus y is equal to m. Now, here's the trick. I don't know if it's a trick, but here's the, here's the technique strategy, the, the, the smart move is, you know, what, let's find the slope of this line segment, this green one right here, right? Let's, you know, let's, let's find the slope of that green line segment from this point to that point. 
Now, as you know, you're like, well, what? Isn't that the same? Yeah, it is the same. Same um, slope, because it's a straight line. But since we're finding it from here, we can write it in terms of x. We can do 0 minus 8 over x minus 1. We get negative 8 over x minus 1. And then both of these have to be equal to each other because they're both equal to m. So now based on that, we set them equal to each other. We go 8 minus y is equal to negative 8 over x minus 1. And let's solve this for y. So let's add 8 or take away 8 from both sides. We'll get negative y equals negative 8 over x minus 1 minus 8. Let's keep on solving. Make multiply h by negative 1 go and we get y is then positive 8 over x minus 1 plus 8. So this is our equation for y and bang what, what, what I mean now I can put this in for this y up here and I can create the ultimate equation for the capital H value in terms of just x. Cool. So let's do that. Let's rewrite this in terms of just x. So I'm gonna use my pen x squared plus eight over x minus one plus eight. All squared is equal to capital H. So essentially we wanna differentiate h with respect to x, find the critical value, find where it's equal to zero or it's undefined, and that would be, you know, the maximum or minimum in this case, we're trying to find the minimum value of h. So um, let's first simplify this inside to make it a little easier to differentiate so that we don't run into some crazy algebra problems. So let's rewrite this as x squared plus, put this over x minus one, x minus one. So we have x or eight over x minus one plus an eight x minus one over x minus one. All that squared. Keep on simplifying, combine this. We'll get x squared, we'll get h is equal to x squared plus eight plus eight x, but then we have an eight minus a one so that eight, these eights actually cancel on top. So all you have is eight x on top over x minus one in the bottom. Here we go. This is where the fun starts, or this is where the fun gets um, exponentially greater. It gets more fun, funner. So what we do now is differentiate h with respect to x. So let's go ahead, let's, let's use our chapter two skills where we learn the chain rule, dh dx will be 2x plus using chain rule, using the power exponent, outside two times 8x over x minus one to the one power times the derivative of the inside. That's where you gotta use quotient rule. So it's gonna be all over x minus one squared. On top, the derivative of the top, eight times the bottom, x minus one, minus, keeping the top function the same, times the derivative of the bottom, all like this. Let's keep on going. So get two x, plus a 16x over an x minus one. X minus one times x minus one, so we're gonna make it all over x minus one cubed. Let's get fancy here. So let's go on. Um, here we'll have eight x minus eight. Eight x minus eight over here, minus eight x. So my eight x minus eight x, so 8x is cancel, so all you have on top is minus 8, actually. So then let's go ahead and let's write this as minus 8. I don't know why I made that so long, or I don't know. Let's go ahead and let's find now. We write dh dx. as 
2x minus 81 minus 128x over x minus 1 cubed. So here's our simplified equation for dh dx. Now we got to find the critical values of this. So what we got to do is set this equal to 0 and solve for x. So we're going to make dh dx equal to 0. So we're going to have our critical value 0 is equal to 2x minus 128x over x minus 1 cubed. This is basically a test of your algebra skills. So you have seen if you truly passed pre-cal and deserve to be in this class. So we're going to add this to both sides and multiply both sides by x minus 1 cubed. Let's just break it up to make it more easy to know what I'm talking about. X minus one cubed equals two X. Multiply both sides, multiply both by X minus one cubed, divide by two X. So what happens is we get 128 X over two X is equal to X minus one cubed. This breaks down and we get 64 is equal to X minus one cubed. And we can take the third root of both sides, but you can pretty much kind of figure out off the top of your head that four to the third is 64. So X minus one is five, and that means X is equal to four. And so, No, I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. I was testing to see if you guys were, I'm gonna be confused by that. Luckily I got this wide out. This is equal to four. Whoops. Third root of 64. Now let's just do this. Third root of 64, third root of that. Third root of 64, I get four. So then X minus one is four, so then X is five. All right, this is a mess. Let's just go over here. X is five, that's our critical value. Critical value, that's, that's the key. So the minimum length of the hypotenuse is gonna occur when X is five. Now you can always, you know, go further and calculate and do, you know, some more work to keep yourself, you know, having fun. But just, you know, just making sense of the problem it, it, it's going to be kind of clear that, that that's what's going to happen because um, just plugging numbers in and just seeing like the ladder do its thing. Um, like, again, like um, if you're, remember, if you have this, this is something that's being tilted. I don't know if this will work. If you're having a ladder that's being tilted, it has to stay at one eight. So, you know, um, if, it, if it's going to be vertical, if it's like a vertical line, that means the y is eight over here. I mean, it's not even going to be a it's not even going to be a triangle at all. So it has to stay so much planted. The y has to be somewhat above. So y has to be above eight, and then x has to be to the right of this. Has to go somewhere over there, and so forth. So um, again, what you can always do is take the second derivative and see if at the second derivative that at x five you're gonna have uh, a maximum. So then from there, you can then verify that you have a clear, you know, minimum value there. And actually, let's just do this, because I let's actually just do that because, you know, I, I like differentiating. So let's just find the second derivative to show you what I mean. Second derivative of h with respect to x, so it's actually not gonna be too hard, two minus, I use chain rule again, or I mean quotient rule, x minus one to the sixth power. The top derivative, 128 times the bottom, x minus one cubed minus 128x times the derivative of the bottom, which will be, actually this is getting more complicated or this is getting more tedious than I hope so, but that's okay. x minus one squared there. And then you just find um, what the value is when x is five. 
it's actually it's not it's just it's just a plug and chug so find when x is five what the second derivative is when x is five you get that the second derivative of h with respect to x will be two minus all this when i'm going to time the time travel all right, so then calculating the second derivative there, you get that the second derivative at five is 7.5. So that means the graph is concave up. And there, see, then you got your minimum there. You got your minimum when x is five. So that does mean that when x is five, you'll get a minimum hypotenuse length. So there you go, problem solved. No, no 